The town of Grantham is located in the South Kesteven district of Lincolnshire, England, and serves as both a market and industrial hub. It is positioned along the banks of the River Witham and is bordered to the west by the A1 road. The town is situated approximately 23 miles to the south of Lincoln and 22 miles to the east of Nottingham. In 1994, the community was left reeling when the life of a married mother of two was cruelly stolen from her. 38-year-old Julie Pacey resided in a luxury home on Longcliff Road with her husband of 18 years, Andrew, and their children, 14-year-old Helen and 11-year-old Matthew. Julie and Andrew were childhood sweethearts, and her husband described her as kind and caring and considerate, and she lived for the family. In 1994, Andrew worked in a plumbing business, and Julie was employed part-time at St Peter and Paul Day Nursery, located on St Catherine's Road, which sat opposite the local police headquarters. On the 26th of September, at approximately 10am, Julie Pacey left the family home for a shift at work. Her husband, alongside his brother, were already away and working on a plumbing contract at a packaging firm on Springfield Road. Julie returned to her residence in the family's Audi car at 2.45pm that day. Approximately 30 minutes later, she left her home to go to the shops, and was observed driving the Audi on Highcliffe Road near her residence. Interestingly, a man wearing blue overalls was spotted walking up the road at the same time. He ventured into the road just as Pacey was driving by in her car, causing her to come dangerously close to hitting him. Once Pacey's car drove by, witnesses saw the man abruptly turn around and sprint back in the direction from which Pacey's car had come. This man in blue overalls would later become an important person of interest in the case. At 4.15pm, Helen Pacey returned from school. Tragically, in the first floor bathroom, after pushing the door open after feeling some resistance, she discovered the lifeless body of her mother lying face down on the bathroom tiles. She had thought that her mother had collapsed and subsequently dialed 999. Julie Pacey had been sexually assaulted and strangled, with ligature marks around her neck suggesting that she had been asphyxiated with a cord which the killer had taken with them. Although fully clothed, the clothes were in a state of disorder. A Luc de Roche watch which she had bought on holiday in France a few weeks prior was notably absent, although the watch itself was valued at around £10. It was believed that her daughter found her just minutes after the attack. There were no signs of a break-in or a struggle, suggesting that she was strangled from behind. Helen was unable to recall whether the front door had been locked or not when she'd returned home from school that day. However, all the windows and the back door were locked. The overalls man, as he came to be known, became a person of interest as more witness statements mentioned this peculiar individual. At 3.30pm on the 23rd of September, just three days before the murder, a girl who regularly visited the Pacey home after school to wait to be picked up by her mother saw the man in blue overalls walking in the Pacey's driveway. As the girl entered the driveway, the man passed by, where she was able to identify further characteristics, including that he was wearing brown workman's boots, was overweight and looked to be around the age range of 35 to 45. She described him as a strange man, with a round face that was, quote, all pink. She further described that he had a ruddy complexion and rough hands. As she entered the Pacey home, inside was Julie, who asked her about the unidentified individual. Julie explained to the girl that the man had knocked at the door, which Julie had initially assumed was the girl, however she was surprised to see the man standing there. He then asked her for directions to Eskdale Road. 
The girl who had seen the overalls man later aided investigators in creating an e-fit. The overalls man was seen in Grantham between the 22nd and the 27th of September, both in the lead up to and following Julie's death. The witnesses corroborated that the man had an unusually flushed face and they also told authorities that he asked for directions to many different places, one example being directions to an industrial estate on the other side of town. Strangely, on all occasions, he never requested the witnesses to repeat the directions he had asked for. On the 27th of September, the day after the murder, the man who was still wearing blue overalls entered a shop located in the Grantham Town Centre, with the shopkeeper noting that he was acting suspiciously. On the same day, at 9am, he was seen kicking grass as if he was seeking something out. Unusually, in the hours leading up to Julie's death, several witnesses reported seeing Julie in a BMW 5 Series, despite the fact that the Pacey family car was an Audi 80. On the day of the murder, at around 2.50pm, an acquaintance of the family's saw a BMW turn into the Pacey driveway, with the Audi already parked in it. This is notable as Julie had just returned home five minutes earlier at 2.45pm. Her family found these claims bizarre as they had no knowledge of this BMW. The same vehicle was twice seen speeding away from the Pacey home at around 3.20pm. Investigators established that there was a sexual motive for the crime. However, police struggled to identify a reason as to why Julie Pacey specifically was targeted. They believed that the watch which was stolen was likely given to a partner or a friend, and the recipient had no clue of the timepiece's significance. Julie's parents believe that her killer may not have known her, but probably knew of her. They stated that they felt it was too much of a coincidence that the killing occurred at a time where she was alone in the house. Detective Superintendent Roger Billingsley later declared that the crime was premeditated. Over 500 people around the area at the time of the murder were questioned, and questionnaires were handed out to mothers and children. The artistic rendering of the overalls man was given to every household in the neighbourhood where the Paces lived. Unfortunately, all leads led to dead ends and the case went cold. In 2001, it was reported that Julie's case was briefly linked to the unsolved murder of 21-year-old Sharon Harper, who was killed two months prior to Julie. Sharon, who worked as a barmaid, was found beaten and strangled at the car park of Shepherd Construction on Earlsfield Lane on the 3rd of July 1994. Earlsfield Lane is approximately two and a half miles from the Pacey home on Longcliffe Road. Police later stated that they did not believe the cases were related. However, like Julie, Sharon was sexually assaulted before she was killed. Her daughter, who was a few months old at the time of Sharon's murder, stated that police never explained to her why the cases were not linked, and she is eager for her mother's case to be more widely publicised, as she, just like Julie's loved ones, remains without answers. In 2015, there was a major development in Julie's case after British television programme Crime Watch aired a second appeal regarding the case. It was revealed that police had obtained a full DNA profile of the killer, which was described as a landmark forensic breakthrough. Police ran the profile through the criminal database, however they did not find a match. The overalls man was also still named as a suspect, with police strongly suggesting that they are confident that this individual was the person who killed Julie. As of 2023, the overalls man has yet to be identified. The owner of the BMW seen by several witnesses on that day has also never been identified. 
Bizarrely, for a time, Steve Watson, the actor for the overalls man in the Crime Watch reconstruction in 1994, which was re-shown in 2015, was called into police as being the suspect. He received verbal abuse from locals who mistook him to be Julie's killer, despite it being clearly stated in both Crime Watch appeals that it was a reconstruction. In order to clear his name, he submitted his DNA and was ruled out as a suspect in 2017. As of 2023, the murder of Julie Pacey remains unsolved. Thank you.